what it was, was told Taylor, hey, why don't we do this? Why don't we film everything? Talk to the cameras, like, let's bring, like, the characters, you know? Like, you know when you go on a trip with Donovan? Like, it's the most entertaining trip of your life. You go on a trip with Benji, and it is, it's, it doesn't matter what surf's like. It's almost better if there's no surf with those guys, because it's nonstop. So, Taylor and I are talking, we're like, all right, so who, who would it be? What would you do? And we're like, we have no money to do this, so let's keep it, let's keep it simple. Like, let's get an RV, and we'll go, you know, we'll do all of California, and we'll do it in a month. You know, and you're thinking, like, month, no big deal, right? The month in a motorhome straight is, like, gnarly. And when you're asking people, like, he's like, we'll call people who, do, you know, we wrote lists down of all these guys that would be awesome and awesome together, you know? And it was, like, you know, it was Donovan and, and Barney. I never hung out with Barney, you know? I only knew Barney because what you saw in the parts of Barney and going up to Santa Cruz and just, he was a character. And it's like how, we, we just thought like how amazing this would be. And I called everybody. Yeah, and nobody wanted to spend a month in a motorhome. Who, who responded? So, it was pretty much nobody. And then ta I, I told Taylor, you know, in one of our talks, he's like, so what's happening? And I was like, you know, the, Donovan's in. Right? Maybe the person that most people would think least to say that when they're he, in. Uh, yeah, I can believe that. Donovan, Donovan's whole career, like, Donovan was the best surfer at 15. Like, in all of California, in all of the United States, Donovan was the best guy. Like, hands down. He won men's, juniors, everything. Uh, coolest style, unique, individual from, like, in and out of the water. Um, so I think he just didn't phase on it. We're gonna do something different. I get to be part of doing something different. You fucking sign me up. And, and like, it was a no brainer. And then it was like, okay, who else? How can we get it? How can we get a group that like makes sense? And Taylor's like, well, you can be one of the guys, you know, and film and help do it. And I was like, okay, like, awesome. Like maybe a little resurgence of Greg or whatever. But like, I knew that like, I had to organize everything I had to keep the bus moving. I did all the water. I did land stuff along with Dave MG. And acted as one of the pro and, surfers. And surfed, yeah. yeah. That's crazy. And so I had Donovan and me. And then I was like, Taylor, like, we need help. And then Taylor's like, all right, so next on the list is Barney. So we called Barney. And Barney's like, yeah, I'm in. Come pick me up. <laughs> and so, like, cool, we got Barney. And then he's like, you know, who else? And then it was like, well, what about Kalani? Kalani was on the tour. What about Benji? Benji was you know, chasing around the tour. Um, Timmy had just stopped and he's like, well, dude, Timmy, like there's nobody doing Curry. bigger airs. Curran can surf everywhere, lives in California, so he's not too far off the home. Um, you know, and we'd reach out to everybody, but Timmy signed up, Barney, Donovan, and me, and we rented a motor home and really started in Santa Cruz, worked our way up to, to like Crescent City and then drove all the way down over a month. And I had a almost, well, he was, Drew was, you know, almost two, maybe two and a half. Uh, he's in the video at the end, like, like Drew is in the credits, you know, as a little, this so little did human. Your wife, did Jamie look after what? Yeah, she was gone for thirty days. Yeah, she she watched him. He, she was he was with her and and you know her mom and my mom and and uh, yeah, it was a big undertaking. And like honestly, like we were trying to come up with names. I think my brother came up with the name, the drive through, you know. And then Donovan's like drive through. We're just driving through. And then like he's making songs and like we bought this keyboard. And then he started making a contest and like that's my favorite part. This is this is the premiere edition. Yeah. You, you got to explain to people what this is. Okay, so at this time, you know, DVD... I'm, I'm holding a VHS for those of you that aren't watching. It says drive through Premiere Edition. drive through Premiere. So that was played at La Paloma for our, our premiere in San Diego, which is like where all of Taylor's movies are played. It was played in Hermosa at the the Hermosa Pier Avenue School, which is where we play all of our surf movies. And So you guys use this exact VHS this for it. all the premieres that I would go and sit and watch and scream at. This is it. I have no idea how I still have this, but it probably should just it's put in a it rant. somewhere. I don't even know what this is on. Which it, that's oh tracking, tracking hats. Tracking hats. There's some tracking. We got some that. tracking issues. Hang on. Ah. 
Nobody knew what to do with this movie. Everybody came to the premiere. Uh, it was hilarious. We figured after this this 30 days that, hey, we could do it in two weeks and we'd be fine. And is that where you moved into? Because Drive Through became yeah, was, one of the most successful surf series ever. Yeah, it was like, you know, we did it. We figured, like, okay, 14 days. Hey, Greg, you're not a pro surfer. You know, why don't you work on just filming and organizing? So that was my choice. Taylor gave me the choice, and I thought it would be better to get Rob in there or Benji in there than have me in there, you know? And uh, So how did you get the guys who all said no to finally say yes? Half the time. Look at how young Donovan is here. Still got the best mustache. There, right? <laughs> Look at how trash that motorhome was. I love this, dude. So this this day in Ocean Ocean uh, Beach was where like we pulled over, we surfed, the awning almost blew off, we all broke our fingers, and then we parked at night, and then there was a. Asian gang fight hitting into our <laughs> motorhome with nunchucks and stuff like what we called the cops like nobody had cell phones really at this time you know you don't think about it but like I think I had a cell phone that was like $500 wait so month. did you guys actually sleep in the motorhome the whole time yeah we did like we didn't rent a hotel we didn't do anything I that just... trip you because uh, Greg was nice enough to invite me to New Zealand and we every once in a while I was broken up by a couple hotel stints and it was yeah. only two weeks and that was a gnarly trip yeah. So this was twice as long. Twice never, as long. With and, one motorhome. Yeah, and, and one motorhome. And, and the thing is, like, you just don't realize, you know, doing these things is, like, when you go on a surf trip, like, you surf when it's good. Like, a drive through like, we surf all day. Just Yeah. Oh, dude, my, don't you... My do finger you, gets, like, almost ripped off right here because of the wind. Are you in your jeans in a rainstorm? Yeah, well, it was, like, dead wind and, like, light sprinkles. And then here's where. Are all the beeps people yelling uh, cuss words? <laughs> yeah, the beeps are cuss words. Yeah, down my last pair of pants, still three weeks left. Some of my favorite things in a drive through was when, in, in New Zealand, you were there with Benji, or Donovan and Pat. Oh, there goes your finger. No, that's Donovan's finger. Oh. Mine's he, next. He's just, everybody's just cussing. <laughs> he's losing it. <laughs> this is everything that my brother wanted us to film when he loses it it's the best you never see it coming there's where mine went and now you're over it he's laughing at you and stop yeah him. well you know when your friend gets hurt you always gotta laugh oh i love seeing this <laughs> it's like this bottle of vodka It's funny watching all these videos and like, I mean, you sit there and watch and you're just you're like laughing. I, Barney's dog. It's in me wanting to do this. Like I so just wanted to be a part of you watching your life and your accomplishments, which you have on TV. But the crazy part of this part of your story is now you're the producer and creator. Yeah. So I, I, I don't think that like, honestly, like we did the, did the drive throughs to like, do something in surf and like show people like how ridiculously awesome these guys are and how fun, what a real surf trip is. Like it's not just the day you scored. It was like the crappy days. The crappy days are the funniest days. So this San Clemente Pier, like when's the last time any of these guys have surfed San Clemente Pier, you know? Never. And it's awesome. Too. It's why this, this is, what you did is you crossed the boundary barrier, however you want to put it, between untouchable pro surfers and how everyone can relate to them because they're just humans. Yeah. I mean, these guys are, these guys do the same thing as everybody else. They're, I mean, Donovan and Benji are probably the only two funny guys that can hang out together. Because, you know, one funny guy and then you can't have another one. It's just not how it works. Well, you also put it good, too. It's, it's alpha males hanging out. Yeah, sense. but it's hard to get two alphas. Yeah. Like, you can't. Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, somebody's going to over-peacock the other guy, you know? So it's <laughs> yeah. like... This is the guy with tracking hats on. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but is my, mine fell apart. No, that's good. It helped. You see? I, yeah, I guess it's working. Earlier. It looks good. But yeah, like, I mean, this one just, everybody was like, I mean, we didn't score waves. We 
didn't do anything, but I think it was just relatable. And then we got to do another one. And, and uh, then Rob went, you know, and Benji went. And then it was like, it was fun. And it was fun. This was this ridiculous. Is this is what I wanted to watch. Please walk me through this. Okay, so, you know, we're 20, day 28 right here, pretty much. And we had this keyboard that Donovan found. And the waves were terrible. And we were all over surfing. But it was a left, and we hadn't got many lefts. So Rob showed up for a couple days while we were in San Diego to surf with us. So him, him and Timmy just went out and had, like, a, a surf session. So Donovan's like, hey, film this, film this, film this. So I held the mic. That's all I'm really doing there. And he came <laughs> up with this whole, like, competition thing. Somehow Taylor talked to Hanson's energy, which is makes monster energy, right? Oh, this isn't a joke? I thought this was a joke. No, like he talked to them and said, hey, we can do this thing with you guys. Yeah, you mean like Mountain Dew with my podcast? Like Mountain Dew. Yeah. Like Mountain Dew. Like you come up with something funny and maybe they buy it, you know? I had no idea that was real. I thought that it made it even oh. funnier to me. So the guy that Taylor knew at Hanson's was like, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen. They were awesome. I can't remember who it was, but they were so into it. And like, it just was ridiculously funny. I think this is when the world realized how funny Donovan is. We didn't know him yet. Donovan is a funny guy. So Donovan and Brad Gerlach hung out at the time, and it was like game-changing humor. <laughs> but you can tell, <laughs> you like, I'm so, I'm so bad. Barney. The most random best comments ever. I loved Sean Barney Barron's humor. was so there's, good. There's a line in the the drive through Japan that he says that he opens I lost the, my shoe, the van shoes. Yeah, he opens a sliding yeah. door, there's two Japanese girls, and what he says is, I got van shoes. And you're like, why did you say that? They didn't understand what you said. <laughs> and then he closed the door, and done. Look at him dance, like, he is so funny. He's his a, glasses, his you, hat. You don't even exist. I'm not here. You're not there. Elbow. <laughs> <laughs> but this, like, this isn't edited. The only thing we did is we literally, like, you stacked him the whole time and put over the surf clip, put over the surf clip. Like, it's nonstop, just humor. This is, this might be my favorite moment in all of drive through history. It's so good. Yeah. Could, could have been an eight. Very <laughs> good. I don't know. Donovan was probably the first free surfer, right? Like, where it was like, he stopped competing early. And he just became the man. Yeah. You know? So I'm going to pull the elephant out of the room because I remember at this point when I knew you, you were basically editing all night long because you became a single parent. Yep. And now making, was it drive through one? No, so we had, we had linked up with Fuel TV. Um, okay, so you're in a f season four. Yeah, we, we just finished our, our third our third drive through which was Australia the first time, I think. And we had hooked up with with uh, the Croc Hunter. And everybody was, was so fun. everybody was just baffled. Like, how did you get Steve Irwin in? You know, and I was like, literally, I called the Australia Zoo on the phone and said, hey, my name is Greg Browning. I'm with Rob Machado and some other surfers, and they wanted to come hang out with Steve. And the, the lady owns, I mean, it's his family's zoo. I had no idea. And, and she just said, well, let me, let me call you back, see, see if I can get a hold of Steve. He calls back. The croc hunter. Like two hours later, again, on a cell phone that is like a flip phone and, you know, that doesn't really work. And I'm like, there's no way this is him on the phone. Somebody's fucking with me. Did he answer and say, hey, hey, it's Steve Irwin? Yeah, yeah, and was like, come in tomorrow. And we're like, what? So we went, and we had Dean Morrison came with us. And awesome. We literally went, and it was like, you've never met a more real human in your life. You're like, wow, it's not just TV. It's like, this guy's in. And he was so just, he's such a surf fan, or was such a surf fan. And then, like, the end of the day, he's like, all right, guys, what are you taking home? And it's like their little souvenir shop. And he's, like, putting shirts on everybody and croc hunter outfits. And, like, you guys all good? Like, are we surfing tomorrow? Like, he was so in, but he had to do something. I mean, it was, it was the most wild experience. And then 
you know, uh, Blue Torch stopped and fuel was created. And C.J. Oliveris just kind of saw that and knew Taylor. and like 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, Blue Torch? Yeah, and it was just like... With Leanne, remember Leanne? Yeah. Jane Dorian's old girlfriend. Jane, she was hot. Yeah, she still does stuff I gave her right my now. phone number on their TV show. She never called me back. That makes sense. That makes sense. I was like 13. I, I just... I think you gave a lot of girls your number at 13. Yeah. I don't think you knew what that meant, though, at 13. No, I would have been too scared anyways. You're I, so knew I didn't have bouncing, my tracking hat. Bouncing on top of bounce I, I, houses. I put my tracking hat on in your fire truck room that you used to let me come into when yeah. I started understanding yeah. what that meant. Fire truck. Fire truck. Well, when Greg, when Greg moves into the story coming up of being a single parent, this house turned into him, you, your brother, and your best friend. Yeah. And for me personally, it wasn't for you. It was the best time of my life because I came here and it was like... Yeah. Yeah, because you were so young. Dorm, yeah. I'm like, oh, this is epic. Yeah, I had. But, but uh, for you, that had that's. Well, I was. You know, I was the biggest change in your life. I was at that point working, working more with Body Glove again, uh, working on the drive-throughs with Fuel. They didn't know what the drive-through was going to be, so I think our first season was like six or seven episodes. There wasn't that much money that they were putting out, but it was enough to pay for the trip and go, and. Uh, and we went, and it was awesome. I mean, that was one of the first ones. That was the first one that Taylor went on. Huh. He never went on the other three, you know. It was just me doing it, and he would help kind of make sure that I was checking all the boxes along the way. And, and uh, that was the first one we did together. And, and uh, we made seven half-hour TV shows for Fuel. And at that time, I was, you know, we were doing all the editing in San Diego, so I would wake up in, you know, in the morning, get my kids breakfast, take them to school and then go into work at Body Glove, pick them up from school at like three, do homework, get food, and then put them to bed at around nine. And then my brother was home at the house and my, my friend Jack, and then I would drive to San Diego, go down, edit from like, you know, I'd get down there at like 11, work till like four in the morning, drive back home, um, wake up, take the kids, you know, wake the kids up, get breakfast, and, and, you know, their mom had them half the time, and I had them half the time, and that was, like, it for, like, yeah, it seemed like, like, a 10-year period of that, which is where I think Mountain Dew became my friend. Cheers. And, uh, Great yeah. sponsor. Thanks, yeah. Mountain Dew. So, uh, so you also contracted pneumonia, because what people don't realize is Greg was, you were doing everything you could for this drive through series. Like, what he yeah. just told you all is real. And that wasn't, like, one day out of the week. I remember multiple times we'd go to shoot, and, and you're like, hey, the waves are good. And I'm like, you're at the beach? You're like, yeah, I just got, I haven't slept. I, I just finished editing. Yeah. Well, that's and, why I have bags under my eyes that are, like, permanently here. It probably happens at 45, but, like. But now we can hear you before we see you. You have a permanent cough that I know if Greg's around. I could hear you from, like, 300 yards away. I'm like, oh, Greg's coming. <laughs> I do. I don't know if I've coughed that much on this. Thing. No, you no. Then it's good. <clears throat> That's it right there. If you wonder what it sounded like, I I think for me getting to watch you and have you be my mentor and really the only reason I became a professional surfer at twelve, you were the first pro surfer I ever met. You came over my birthday, gave us on a mission bags and grip pads, and we were all like, Greg Brown, and you just got. It was like very close to. We had this cover. We were like, we know this guy on Surfer Magazine, and you came over. And we're normal. You're like the nicest dude ever. And I was like, I want to be Greg Browning. Yeah. Just like you funny. put, you know, pots, airbrushes. I was like, that's what I want to do. And if it wasn't for you and your attitude, we, I didn't know what professional surfing was, but I just knew you were cool. And I think you've influenced so many people's life further than your ability that it's fun for me to sit here and go like, God, dude, remember how hard you ripped? Like you, you've done it all. And, and, but I've always been in the bigger person. You, you came in and filmed those guys. You didn't have to do that. You know, you went on the drive through you were the server, but you filmed them all and then you left and then you pumped them all. Like, it just seems like you were always not about yourself and really always thinking of other people. I think it was just, there's, there's always, always that, that fear of like responsibility and like, you know, like, are you going to do it? And especially when I had kids, it was like, Hey, you got to do it. It's on you, like, <laughs> what? How are you gonna do this? And like, you know, trying to follow your like passion, you know. Like, I wanted to be a pro surfer, like I did, and, and wholeheartedly wanted to, and and made every effort um, 
that I could, but like through that I, I made friendships. I, I found like a passion to film and, and edit and, and a way to stay in surfing. Like I have as much fun filming surfing and, and watching surfing with good surfers as I do surfing now, you know, and, and, and I, I, I didn't plan to do that. I mean, I, I didn't go to school to, to learn how to, to be a filmer. I just did it out of necessity because I wanted to watch myself surf. And um, I got into it, luckily, because, you know, the, the need for content. I mean, even right now, it's greater than ever. So, like, you know, a guy like me can work and make a living to support a couple kids by just, you know, going out there and trying to tell stories and and do it. And, and I don't know, I've kind of lived, like, based off of karma like you know just try to try to do your best and and be your best and and hopefully it'll work out you know and what would you tell 24 year old greg who was lost in life now should i stop this before it gets to zero percent yeah okay. let's stop we'll do a restart i'll tell you that answer after this break from mountain dew we're going to the dew break Woo! we're back he's yeah. without his hat but it's oh, fine sorry. no there sorry. you come yeah. back no no actually yeah. i actually like his hat because it makes my my hairline differently like it yep. matches yours now like it's right here instead of like right here <laughs> okay we got a, my final question which I'm, we're going sentimental internal and uh i want greg now to look back at the 24 25 year old greg and tell him uh, you know what you probably wish you could have heard okay so i i think like i, I so with surfing it was like Go fast, stay low, right? That's just the simple thing. Like, just simplify what you, what your brain is trying to do to you, right? You know, like the less you think surfing, the the better you surf. So, like, I think that applies to other parts of life. Like, relax. You know what, what's what's meant to be. My mom always says, like, everything happens for a reason, and you can go through it all and like hey, you know, I should have put more time in, you know, focusing on my part for the show. Well, something steered me to, like, not doing that and end up having my my first son and then my second son and then, you know, meeting the, you know, getting that job at Body Glove and working with Mark Calcami to learn Photoshop and Illustrator and meeting all these different people and doing 17 and, like, going to the East Coast and going to Japan and going into cut and sew places and understanding just a next phase of life, like slow down, like relax a little bit. Like I know you're scared, but so is everybody else. Mm -hmm. And I mean, even still today, like it's like, yeah, that check's supposed to be there. I got to pay rent next week. And it's like, it will come, settle down. It will come, like it will come. And then sure enough, like, on the, you know, that final hour, it shows up. And you're like, dang, I just stressed out, I lost hair, like I don't have a lot of hair left <laughs> to lose. So you're like, why did I stress out? And why did I do that? And why did I ruin that moment? Like I could have enjoyed hanging out with you, but instead I freaked out about this and now I ruined it. And, and then you just, it is the gnarliest spiral. So I would just tell myself like, relax. Keep, keep moving forward. Wake up every day and just get out there. Help somebody else out. Pass mm -hmm. on anything you know. Like, to me, the, the greatest thing about, I think, my journey has been everybody that I've gotten to meet along the way. Like, surfing is still relevant to me because I had you. <laughs> I had, you know, Carissa. And I had... The Dusty Pains, I had, you know, all of these guys that were generations after me, you know, the guys on the drive-thru, Yaden, Ry Craig, uh, Bruce, Andy, like, I've been a part of, like, the coolest moments in the sport that I loved and wanted so much to be a part of, just in a different way. And it all just happened because I kept trying. So, like, try be positive you know try something you always told me is that it never it's, it never ends until you make it end yeah right that's what is that advice mean? who told you that you did <laughs> every day yeah I, I uh 
You know, you think it's just like it just, sums up what you just said. As long as you keep trying and putting effort into something, you can go as long as you want. Yeah, and you can do whatever you want. Like, how how did I make the drive throughs Like, everybody goes on surf trips. Like, was it was I have the brainiac idea? No, I didn't. I literally just hey, let's try it. See what happens. It was it was terrible. Like, if you watch a drive through it's terrible. It is just random, random, random. But, like, it's the journey. It was fun. It was funny. It had great people. It was, like, it's insane. It, you just never would put yourself there, you know? And, and uh, yeah, crazy. All right. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. We're going to end it with something I wasn't even prepared for. But Nolte wants it. Actually, Nolte Nolte's wants roommate it. wants it. No, this is my, this is Devin. Nolte's friend Devin. wants it? Devin, Devin, this is for you. It's called Speed Round. i got to come up with some just quick random questions. Uh, first question, who was your favorite surfer in that group? In the momentum, momentum group? group? Yeah. The style-wise, Ross. Uh, guy to hang out with, uh, Benji. Who would you get along with least? I don't think I did. I, I don't think I had that that uh, least deal. That's awesome. Uh, the biggest, the worst moment of it all was probably me and Jason in France on that first trip. Because uh, it was both of our first trips. and, and uh, Trip went too long. The trip just went too <laughs> yeah, long, you know? It happens. So it happens. Favorite I have an annoying voice, dude. I get it. I, I get it, Jason. I love you. Yes, and see, it's still real. Uh, favorite drive through Oh, wow. Favorite drive through I would say the favorite drive through was South Africa. Um, met some just awesome people that helped us. Uh, Aunt Schulte, who was just, I just saw him last year for the first time since drive through and like, is awesome. And Martin Potter was there, and uh, we got perfect waves, and we all got to surf perfect J-Bay. Like, that was one of the things on that drive through where we finally had a moment where the filmers could catch a couple waves. So oh, like, and you got the wave of the day. I got fun waves. Taylor got fun waves. Bouchane got fun waves. You got the wave of the day. Like that was that was it. And and we worked with uh, Davey Wydetz in San Diego, who did all the artwork and the graphics. And like, it just was fun. It, the, from start to finish was fun. Uh, we had e, this, this kid from San Diego, Ian, that that did all the the behind the scenes. Like we just had a good time. It was fun. Fun. Non-stop. Fa- favorite dinner from mom? Favorite mom dinner. It's actually not really dinner. It's She makes the best tuna salad ever. That's cold. I love cold tuna salad. <laughs> <laughs> favorite session with your son, Parker? You know what? So, my oldest son, Drew, surfs, but not that often. More, like, he's getting into it now at 20. Um, my youngest didn't want to surf Parker who now surfs more than anybody I know and my favorite I don't really have like a favorite surf but this moment where it was actually his stepdad took him to the beach told him you can only bring your surfboard and I got a phone call from him that night saying dad I surfed all day and at that time all he had done was bodyboard he never surfed so I got a call that his first surf session was with his stepdad not me and it was like this moment of like listen to how stoked he is like it wasn't about me it was just he found it on his own you know like and at that point when you find something on your own and aren't forced into it is when it really becomes part of you and that was it so i actually heard it over the phone like matt took us took me surfing i surfed all day dad i caught waves and you could hear matt in the background like you know, laughing a little bit because he obviously saw the waves that he was catching and, you know, Drew surfed and I was just like, I was like in tears on the phone, just so happy that that he found surfing because surfing is, 